In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of real solution behavior on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. So we talked about ideal and ideal dilute solutions, and we also defined Raoult's law and Henry's law. A very brief recap, recall Henry's law is appropriate when you have very, mole very low mole fractions of your species. Raoult's law in this dotted line is applicable when you have very high mole fractions of your species. Okay? And in this green region, this is where neither law is appropriate and you truly have non-ideal solution behavior. And I strongly recommend that you go back and watch the previous video where we discuss this in incredibly more detail. However, at the end of that video, I derived an expression here, and truly these should both be I's to match up with this, or these should be A's, but it really doesn't matter. The point is, the chemical potential of our solution is equal to the chemical potential of the pure solvent plus RT times the natural log of the mole fraction of our solvent A plus RT times the natural log of the activity coefficient of our solvent A. All right? This is derived from Raoult's law, and this expression can be used to fit the situations where we don't have ideal solution behavior, particularly in this green region. Okay? And again, it's derived from Raoult's law, and it predicts non-ideal solution behavior, and we have to do this ultimately because we want our model to fit actual data. All right, on this slide, there's a lot of different pieces of nomenclature. I'm going to try to explain everything in detail so you can understand it. We invented the activity variable. Okay, This was to make our model fit the data. Here is this expression, this is Raoult's law. Again, here is the form of it right here. We have chemical potential of the solution equals chemical potential of the pure solvent plus RT natural log of the activity of that solvent. Okay. Now here, I don't have it broken down into the mole fraction and the activity coefficient. I'm just gonna leave it as A. All right, so what we need to do is we need to come up with an expression for this activity of the solvent, okay? And we're gonna call it the Raoult's Law Standard State. All right, before you read this thing, let me go ahead and explain this. So the activity, the Raoult's Law Standard State activity, this number is equal to the vapor pressure of the solvent. Okay, so remember, we have a solution. Let's just assume here, just for the sake of example, we have a two-component solution. We have a solution containing ethanol and water. Let's suppose in this case, ethanol is our solvent. So if we wanted to calculate the Raoult's Law standard state activity for ethanol, we would take the vapor pressure of ethanol above the solution and divide by the vapor pressure of pure ethanol, okay? Now I've tried to make these subscripts and superscripts as explicit as possible. This solve means it's of the solvent, so it ha whatever species you're dealing with, it has to be the solvent, okay? And you know what would be the solvent if the mole fraction is higher than 0.5, assuming it's a uh, two-component uh, system. Also, this vape means the vapor pressure, so it is the vapor pressure of the solvent. Remember, this star, which you see on the denominator, means it's of the pure solvent okay, or the, whatever it is. So this would be the vapor pressure of pure ethanol, and you could just look up this denominator in a table or, or something like that. So what we can do is we can assume this activity is our Raoult's law, standard state activity, and we can basically substitute this expression in, okay, where the chemical potential of our solution, so if we're using our ethanol water example, assuming ethanol is our solvent and has the higher mole fraction, the chemical potential of that solution is equal to the chemical potential of pure ethanol plus RT times the natural log of the vapor pressure of the ethanol in that solution divided by the, the vapor pressure of pure ethanol, okay? And this substitution of the, this basically P over P comes from the fact that we put activity there to make, our, fit, make our, our model fit the data, and then the activity, assuming we're using ethanol as the solvent, is going to follow Raoult's law standard state, and we use this substitution right here. Okay? And the way you know that you're going to be dealing with Raoult's law standard state is because 
we've defined our two component system of ethanol and water with ethanol being the solvent. So if, as long as we're taking all these values with respect to ethanol and ethanol is the solvent, we know it's the Raoult's law standard state because remember Raoult's law is applicable when we're dealing with the solvent, whenever the mole fraction of the species we're talking about is closer to one. Okay. Now, we have another one, which is Henry's Law Standard State. And I'm not going to go into all this basically crap over here. I'm not going to do that um, because it's really not important. I made this a while ago. But remember, Henry's Law is now appropriate when your mole fraction is close to zero. So we're still going to have our two-component uh, solution. We're going to have ethanol and water. Now we're going to assume ethanol is the solute. There's a mole fraction of ethanol that's very low. We want to define now the Henry's Law standard state, okay? So now we're going to calculate this, but we're assuming now A is ethanol and A is the solute. So now we have a different expression for conditions like that. And the way we're going to define the Henry's Law standard state activity is we're going to take the vapor pressure, and this is the partial vapor pressure of ethanol. And if you want to know what that is, remember we actually defined it here. We've been talking about this with Henry's Law. This P, this is the P that's equal to the Henry's Law constant times the mole fraction. This is the vapor pressure of that particular solute. Okay, so the vapor pressure due to the solute. That's what we're doing here. This is the vapor pressure due to ethanol in our example, assuming ethanol is the low mole fraction close to zero, the solute. We then take that and divide by the Henry's Law constant for that solute. So for example, we would have ethanol's Henry's Law constant, and we would just use that here. Again, that is something you can usually look up in a table. So if we divide the vapor pressure due to the solute ethanol divided by its Henry's Law constant, that will give us our Henry's Law standard state activity. Now, the question is, when do you use which activity? When do you use the Raoult's Law activity? When do you use the Henry's Law activity? Well, first define your species. Define your species. Let's say your A in your two component system is ethanol. Well, look at the mole fraction. Is there mostly ethanol or mostly water? If there's mostly ethanol, that means your mole fraction of ethanol is very high. Then you're going to be using Raoult's Law standard state activity for ethanol. But if you have a mole fraction that's very low for ethanol, maybe it's 0.3, then ethanol is your solute, and now you use the Henry's Law standard state activity. Okay, So you have to analyze your situation, define your species that you're doing it with respect to, and then pick which equation. Okay, Now let's consider the same the same setup, we have a two component system, water and ethanol, but now let's let, let A be water. Let's do it the opposite. Let's assume now A is our water. Let's suppose I have a mole fraction of ethanol of 0.25. Well, that means the mole fraction of water is now 0.75. So if I now do this with respect to water, my mole fraction of water would be 0.75. Now water is my solvent and I use this, Raoult's Law, standard state activity. But now let's say my mole fraction of, of ethanol is 0.75. Well, if I've defined my species to be water that I'm doing it with respect to, if the mole fraction of ethanol is 0.75, then the mole fraction of water is 0.25. And now I have to use the Henry's Law standard state activity. Okay? So be sure you define exactly what species you're dealing with. And then analyze your mole fraction to see which one of these species is therefore appropriate, okay? So hopefully this made sense about Raoult's Law and Henry's Law standard state activities. It's a very confusing topic, but, if you, but you need to know what situation to use which one. And in the next few videos, we're actually gonna do some sample problems, so make sure to join us in those videos, and then we're gonna go into more considerations of real solution behavior. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe.